Yo 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 yo, Pastor Jay's here. How's life treating you? Feeling excited or bit down? Hang in there. You've got this. Let me ask you something. How warm is your heart? Is it icy like the Siberian wind or warm like a blossoming spring day? You know, I've been receiving a lot of emails from the youth. I would like to share one of them. It was many years ago. It was an encouraging email. The person who wrote this email must old now. They must, he must have a, his own family. He wrote it, Dear Dr. J, thank you for your encouragement word. I felt something tonight. Now I think I can move on. I wanted to kill my father for a long time. I felt overwhelmed by pressure. Both my dad and mom are highly educated, but my dad is abusive and an alcoholic. Every day, every night, they fought, and he used to beat me and my mom. I returned to smoking marijuana. Of course, my dad was unaware. I've always, 다시 하겠습니다. I have also started shoplifting. I was failing at school. I lived in fear every day. Despite this, I still had to attend the church, although I am not even sure if I believe in God. I wondered and cried. I was thinking about killing myself numerous times. I couldn't open myself to anyone. That night, I stumbled upon the radio. Tears streamed down my face throughout the broadcast, but I felt something warm in my heart, a newfound confidence that I too could do it. I didn't want to cower in the darkness anymore. Despite my, 다시 합니다. 여기서. Despite my fear, I took a step forward for myself. So I gathered the courage to write this email to tell you thank you. Isn't that awesome? Even though this email is from long time ago, it still feels fresh. If you're watching this sermon, I hope you are living a better life now. But there are still many like him, living with closed eyes and closed heart, unable to feel anything, even when it feels like the world is crumbling and everything is blocked. Stay strong. You can overcome. We still have life in us. Fight on! Look at the disciples of Jesus who were in despair and disappointment. And they failed numerous times, right? But Jesus didn't give up on them. Remember, Jesus retracted, uttered his first word to us, saying, Peace be with you. He knew our anxious and trembling state and desired peace for us. So, are you at peace? Or are you still anxious and fearful like the disciples? How about doubting Thomas? Jesus appeared to him and allowed him to touch his wound, saying, Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Yes, Jesus said that. Even though we haven't seen him, we are blessed because we believe in Jesus. Amen to that. Despite all this, the disciples returned to fishing. We talked about it last week. They spent the night catching nothing until Jesus told them to cast their net on the right side, resulting in a miraculous catch. Look at Peter, recognizing Jesus putting on his outer garment and then jumping to sea in excitement. It must have been a still quiet sight. Jesus appeared to his disciples in various ways, seeking to instill faith in them. Are you still suffocated? There's no meaning of life for you? So listen carefully to today's passage. This is for you. It is his final word to his disciples before his ascension. Look at Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verse 45. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He made them understand the Bible. Why don't this word resonate with us? Why is it so hard to believe? Why do we find ourselves in conflict? That's because there's no word in our heart. There was no word of hope. There's no word of promise in our heart. That's why we're always in despair and discouraged. 
We can't lean on anything. But when you have a word in your heart, you can lean on the word. And when you engage with the word, you discover who you are. People don't realize it. And Jesus' final act was to open the hearts of his disciples, to speak to receptive hearts. His word are not anything else but verse 46 and 47. Let's read together. He told them, this is what it is written. The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. You know what? Our entire faith can be summarized in these two verses. This is the news we need to hear. Our faith lies in the death and resurrection of Jesus. The only way to salvation is through Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. It's about thanking God for His grace and living in repentance for our sins. Do you remember two disciples to Emmaus? Look at verse 32. They asked each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while He talked with us on the road and uh, opened the scripture to us? That's right. Our hearts burn when we have the word. We repent when we have the word. We understand true faith when we have the word. Real faith is acting on the word. Does it make your heart burn? Does it give you a taste of life? In the book of two kinds of faith, faith is now. Real faith acting on. That's right. Faith is now, not yesterday. Not tomorrow. Faith is now. Just do it. Just take the word and believe it. Amen? Amen. You have to open your heart to feel the excitement by the word. Your heart will be passionate again. Here's another command by Jesus. Let's take a look at Gospel of Luke, uh, chapter 24, verse 48. You are witness of these things. Short verse. He told them, to be witnesses. Look at carefully the word of witness. In Greek, the word martyrs means witness. The early church members laid down their lives to testify to what they saw and heard. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 35, women received back their dead and raised to life again. Others were tortured and refused to be released so that they might gain a better resurrection. They didn't plead for their own release. Instead, they endured torture and persecution, even facing death. Some were torn apart by beasts. Others were burned alive. And many suffered martyrdom in various agonizing ways. Yet, they did not renounce their faith. They praised the Lord and were glorified before Him in their martyrdom because they held firm to the faith in the resurrection. They were not afraid of suffering of death. This is what I call burning heart, or fervent heart, or passionate heart. Those with a fervent heart and passionate heart can become witness of Jesus Christ. If those with a fervent heart do mission and share the gospel, cold-hearted individuals cannot do it. They become self-observed and trapped in their own thought. How about you? Are you still suffocated? Do you still want to give up? Open your heart. Listen to his word. Be the fervent heart and be the passionate heart. How? Look at chapter 24, verse 49. I am going to send you what my father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Which means... He told the disciples to stay in the city. Why? Because they needed the most strength and power. Right now, they might stumble. They might fall. In other words, we can't excel in our faith journey right from the start. So it's quite all right. You stumble and you fail. We can't just go out and be witnesses without knowing anything. Think about it. Those who gather are passionate. They are fervent. 
It may seem like going to church isn't that important because you can pray anywhere. But that heart, that honestness in coming to church is more crucial. When you pray with such honestness, when God act, when you turn the key in your car's ignition, God work begins right there. So there's no choice but for his work to happen. Amen. Look at those who don't gather. They just live like that. When it gets tough, they don't gather. When they are discouraged, they don't gather. When they are upset, they don't gather. They end up cooling off. Or they're living from God. That's why Jesus tells his disciples to stay. I, I'm going to say, yeah, you have to stay at the church. Until when? Until they receive power. We must live with the faith through the power of God to remain steadfast. Amen to that. To live a life of witness, we need to receive the power of the Holy Spirit. You know what I think the power of the Holy Spirit is? Truly understanding God's grace. You'll be thankful for God's grace when you really realize what grace is. God gave us as a eternal life as a free gift. And when you are thankful for His grace, that gratitude becomes strength, enabling you to do anything. That's why we have to experience God's grace. This is Kim dong Hyun. While he was in law school, there was a medical accident. He lost his sight. Imagine his anger, frustration, sadness, blaming, you can name it. He didn't have a hope. No reason to rise. His mom said to something, I can't see you. You're struggling anymore. Somehow, all of a sudden, he felt something. He decided to try again. And he went back to school. He finished his law school, passed the bar, and now he became a judge. Yes, he became a judge in Korea. And also, he wrote a book. Now, he's a motivational speaker. Okay, here, let's watch. Hello. The new year has already begun. Are your new year's resolutions going well? Some people might have already given up. Saying it's easy to give up in this era of frustration and failure. If I had stopped because I couldn't see, I wouldn't be a judge. Changing your life starts with a small step, not something grand. If you want something, challenge, try and make an effort. If it doesn't work out, it's never too late to give up. How about starting something new now? And I'd like to encourage those who dare to challenge. I hope you find a small happiness in life and can share it with others. Thank you. Isn't he awesome? Despite his situation, he chose to live and to challenge. He opened his heart. I want to open your heart first. Cut the word into your heart. Then your heart will become burning and passionate. That's when strength arises. You will see God who is with you. The God who gives you power. The God who gives you hope. Don't be close to heart person. Open your heart and experience God. And you will be strong. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us Jesus Christ. But many times we became blind, we became deaf, and we became mute. Because we, we are so we are having so close to heart and we don't want to listen to you, we don't want to obey you. But Father, once again, we just have learned. Although disciples made a lot of mistakes or failures, but Father, we realize that Jesus didn't give up on them. Now I believe that you never gave up on me. Thank you for giving us Jesus Christ. Thank you for giving us salvation. 
Now I'm asking your abundant blessing in the name of the Father and Son and Holy Spirit to every one of us here, as well as our family, our churches, and our countries, all the medical staff taking care of patients, all the missionaries and ministers spreading your word throughout the world, and all the soldiers fighting for peace and freedom throughout the countries. Bring them home safely. Amen.